I just got back from Luton 1, Sunderland 2, and here is my initial post-match reaction. That is a game that Luton Town did not deserve to lose. I've driven back from so many games this season and I've been thoroughly depressed with what I've seen. That wasn't the case tonight. I was really happy. That's my Luton Town. That is the Luton that I love. We were direct. We fought. We showed passion. And there were leaders on the pitch. Now considering Sunderland are the team that are top of the league, you wouldn't have known because you know what? They had two goals. They, they came from just individual moments of quality. But ultimately it comes down to two poor decisions from the referee to allow play to continue when it should have stopped simple as and the referee is a recurring theme in this game and you know what i'm guessing we've got loads of sunsland fans watching this right now you want to hear me bigging up your team but you know what i'm not going to be bigging you up because i think your team were terrible you couldn't live with the direct style of play that luton were playing and you needed the referee to bail you out time and time again let's look at the first goal there was a foul there was it was out right in front of me on the left wing i sit main standee so it was right in front of me and play continued if that was anthony patterson that went down the ref probably would have given him a Big cuddle, stroke his hair. You will be all right. Oh, Anthony, you're all right. Are you all right, mate? That was Luco9. That was Chris Metham. Come on, that Chris Metham thing in the first half. You know, Luton were pressing high. Luton were having a chance. We had a shot and then Chris Metham's down and then the ref blows the whistle and it made no sense. And then the ball goes back to Sunderland. There was a lot of poor refereeing decisions in this game. But you know what? I'm a big boy. This all levels out over the year. But there were a lot of dodgy decisions in this game. Let's have a look at that disallow Colton Morris goal. It would have made it 1-0. And I don't see where the infraction was. I don't think there was one. It was a really bad decision. It was great knock on by tom holmes a bit more about him later and then colton morris he's arriving at the back stick he slams it in and i honestly i have no idea why the goal was disallowed no idea but the the lino was flagging colton giving the no 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 i i don't know i don't i don't i don't understand it but as i said i'm a big boy i'll take the losses i can take losses better when the team have put in the effort. And you know what? This game today, we put in a ton of effort. Especially in a formation and using a style of play where the point is to concede possession. Let the other team have it. And you know what? We had 56% of the ball. We carved out all the chances. Sunderland barely threatened. As I said, two moments of magic. And Mundell, yeah, he looks a player. But other than that, Sunderland weren't really anything. They weren't. And I go back to my video where I said, will Sunderland run out of steam? They're top now. I don't see Sunderland staying at the top. It's essentially Leeds, Sheffield United, perhaps Burnley that will finish top three. Sunderland, most likely playoffs because they have a lot of game management, shall I call it, where they can disrupt the momentum, they disrupt the play, they go down with injuries, but the reality is they have some talent in the team, but I don't see them challenging for the title. Right, enough about Sunderland. I want to talk about Luton Town because I got my Luton Town back. I'm so happy. And there were performances all over the pitch today. I want to start with Tom Holmes. Oh my God, Tom Holmes written off by pretty much the entire fan base before he even kicked a ball in competitive football for Luton Town. And he looks a player. He's he's so big. He's so big. But at the same time, he's so mobile. And he's so good with his feet. He has to start for me. He was so good. He's a leader. 
Like when um, when Briggs scored his goal, immediately Holmes is the one that's g'ing up the team. Holmes is the one that's pointing and giving instructions. He he's a leader, and I said it way back when we signed Tom Holmes and then sent him back to Reading. I said this is not a Lockyer replacement, but I said Tom Holmes is built in the mold of Tom Lockyer. If you don't believe me, you can look back through my tweets from OK Football which was then called another name. But I did, because I could see that from him. You don't play over 200 games for Reading from the age of 20 without having something about you. And I was so impressed with him. What a player. Wow. And a big shout out for Elijah Adebayo. The performance today is completely different having Carlton Morris up top with him. It's so different because the press is symmetrical. It's not just Elijah running from defender to defender to defender. They press together. And then you have a third man in midfield that runs through as well and completes the press. And he signed off with a goal. And what a goal. Classic Elijah Adebayo. It was tremendous. It was so good. I'm so delighted that Elijah is off the mark. And I'm so delighted that the crowd, and oh yeah, the crowd today, so loud. Always behind the team, even when we went behind. They were so behind the team. It was just, the Kenny was fantastic tonight. And it felt like after that Watford game, we got the team back. We got the, the belief of the fans back. It was sensational being there today. But Elijah, I'm so delighted he's opened his account. I've always backed Elijah. I always have. Um, I've been laughed at for it. I even when he had his dry patch this season and, and people have said, ah, oh, you know, get Elijah out of the team. I, I always knew that, you know, he needs someone with him because he just looks so isolated in the style that we play. But tremendous today. He was absolutely sensational. I'm not really about criticizing this performance from Luton because I think it was a tremendous performance. It's just really hard playing against 12 men it's really hard and you can see it all come to a head at the end when there was that absolute ruckus right at the final whistle you know the results the result the way we played i am so confident that if we keep doing this and nothing gets changed maybe the personnel the personnel can get changed but providing the, the way we're playing we're not trying to dominate possession that's the funny thing when you play a system where possession is really important you end up just sucking at it, not retaining possession, not completing your passes. Whereas now we're playing a system where possession is nothing. We don't, we don't want the possession. You know, we don't want the ball. We want the other team to have the ball. We just want to fire long balls upfield. And we ended up with more possession in this game, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. But I guess it's like when you're not looking for something, then it's right in your face. That That's the weirdness of football. But everyone in the back line did a job today. Hashioka, yes, was he at fault for the Mundell goal? Maybe, but you know what? We've seen Mundell do that a lot this season, you know, the cut in. And at the end of the day, Hashioka, he's a right-footed player. Mundell, he cut in on Hashioka's left foot. And it was a good finish, wasn't it? It was, you know, no complaints there. But I think the back line of Holmes, McGuinness and Hashioka, they did a job today. They they were great. And Hashioka, wow, he, did, he wins a lot in the air and McGuinness looks like he's found his feet and there's a lot more to come from this team like now we can go to Coventry and we can actually be optimistic if we play like this I have no issues thinking that we will get a result at Coventry yes Coventry have been struggling they make mistakes at the back but I think we should be absolutely fine in that game I know I know that's the the kiss of death isn't it will be absolutely fine. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it, but I love what I saw from this team tonight. And yes, it was a loss. But yes, it was a loss to the team that are currently top. So no complaints from me. All I wanted to see was a good performance. And that is what I saw. From seeing that performance tonight, which pretty much carried on from the Watford win, I am confident we won't be in a relegation battle. I reckon we will be able to get results and we will be comfortable this season. I'm not saying we're going to be in a playoff push, but I do think we'll be up a mid table. I'm, I'm not concerned. The main thing is continue this because it is working. 
And yes, I have been critical about the system in the past because the system wasn't working. We were trying to be something that we weren't, but now we've gone back to being Luton Town and I love it. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts about that game in the comments. If you're a Sunderland fan, are you always that rubbish? If you're a Luton fan, let me know if you were happy with what you saw, regardless of the result. If you love Luton Town content, please remember, like this video and subscribe for even more Luton Town content. As always, on to Coventry, come on you hatters.